we're going to look at drum racks. So first of all, a drum rack in Ableton um, is a MIDI instrument. So when we're going to be inserting it and using it, we're going to be putting it on MIDI channels. So Ableton comes with a bunch of drum kits pre-installed into it. So if we come to the browser, you can see just under sounds here, we've got drums. So if we select that, we open up this menu and it's got a whole heap of different style drum kits sitting in here. Okay, so um, we've got the drum rack by itself. So if I grab that drum rack and I pull it onto my first MIDI channel, um, you'll see it, it, it loads in here. So what we're looking at basically is a bunch of pads. So all of these individual slots here uh, correlate to the note on a keyboard. So at the moment that is C1. So this is all the denotation basically. And if I were to, um, if I wanted to actually use this, uh, the, right now in its current state, it doesn't make any sound. It's got nothing loaded into it. Um, whereas if I scroll down here to the 909, if I grab that 909 and I drop it on the second MIDI channel, you'll see that um, these pads actually have names of instruments inside of them now. And if I go ahead and press the play button, it auditions the sound that's loaded into that slot. So you can pull, I'll just go back to the first channel with the empty drum rack. You can pull a drum rack in and then you can actually load in whichever samples you'd like. So we'll come back to that in a second. But first things first, we'll have a look at this 909 drum kit. It's probably quite likely that you'll uh, end up using this relatively often. I, I use it all the time, actually. Um, so we'll zoom in. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll draw a MIDI clip. So we'll select the area and we'll go control shift M to drop a MIDI kit uh, clip in. And then we can just double click on the, the, um, the title bar here to bring up the um, piano roll down the bottom. And you'll notice that as I, um, I drag, I'll squish myself up into the corner. Um, as I drag that out, rather than notes, uh, it's showing us the names of all of the instruments that are loaded in to this drum kit. So if we go ahead and we select this, um, we can audition. So if that's deselected, like I showed you in the last video, we can't select any of those. So we can audition our sounds. So we can get an idea of what our closed hats sound like. And maybe we could go ahead and write a little pattern to get an idea of how we would um, put something from uh, a pattern in our brain into the uh, piano roll here. So I'm going to use that closed hat um, and I'm going to use that closed hat. Maybe we'll write a pattern like that. Cool. So all I'm doing is I set my grid to 16th notes because typically regardless of the speed of your music's um, 16th note, uh, hi-hat patterns are going to sound pretty good. So, um, we'll have that, and then we'll have a snare here, and then we'll have, and, um, let's have a listen to see how that sounds. Maybe we'll just grab that, copy it over. So, I'll loop that by right-clicking looping. Cool. And if we, um, if we could, if we just quickly, um, let's just grab a kick just to have a kick going to that. Um, so you get an idea of the actual rhythm. Not the best hi-hat pattern, but it's doing the trick. So that's how we would quickly write some ideas in for our drum kit. Um, if we take a closer look at the actual rack that we've got here, you'll see that um, if I select, say, the hi-hat here, it gives me a bunch of controls, and it also shows me the waveform loaded into a sampler. Okay, so the next video we go over what a sampler is, but um, this is the, the sampler instrument sitting there. And we can go ahead and we can adjust a whole bunch of parameters. So if we want the attack of the hi hi-hat to be rolled off a bit, we can increase the timing there. If we want the decay of it 
to um, if we want the hi hat sample to decay quicker, so uh, in, a, in, a, in an essence, tighten up the sound, we can do that. If we want to pitch the the sound up or down to put it in, uh, try and tune it with the with the track we're writing, we can do that there. So we've got a whole bunch of controls, and we've also got a low cut, which is going to cut any low frequency content out, and we can also roll off the highs. So. We've got all of that loaded in there, and you can also see that there's a couple more instruments that are strapped to the end. So if we started adding some glue, what that's referring to is there's a compressor here that's going to be um, basically compressing the sound, and we can just uh, add that, and the parameters are automatically mapped. So, um, and then when we're moving the, um, the low cut, we're enabling this EQ to cut the end out of it. So that applies to each individual instrument in there so what's happening is this um this hi-hat sample is being processed by this glue compressor and this eq and then it's coming out here and then we could actually put effects after this large group that would affect all of the sounds not just the individual sounds and we'll talk about grouping and how that works um in a video where we specifically talk about chains and groups and this sort of thing and signal flow um for now it's it's just looking at the simple drum kit um, is what we're interested in. So that is how a, a, a drum sampler works. Now let's have a look at this empty drum rack that we've got here. So I'll just give you an example of how you can load stuff into it and what that looks like. So if we go to these open hi hats, I like that guy. So I can audition that sound and then I can go ahead and I can drop it down and now it's loaded in there, and I've got that um, that uh, sample showing up inside the sampler. You'll notice that if I uh, come over here, to, there's no uh, knobs or anything set up for me to control it like there was here. Uh, and that's simply because Ableton, um, they made this kit and they, they added these, um, these mapped controls to... Um, we could do the exact same thing if we really wanted to, so we could um, find the attack of it and we could... Um, adjust it so we could even do we could do a fade in that that could control the attack for us and we can map that to a, a knob and control it but we won't do that for now uh, let's find another one cool that's a nice sort of tinny sound in one we'll create another loop uh sorry midi clip up here and then we can go ahead and draw our pattern and so we'll go 16th notes um so if we solo that We can make a janky kind of jittery pattern there. And then uh, if we come down here, we can also automate the uh, volume of these hi-hats using the um, the velocity controls down here. This gives your hats a bit more of a human feel, and especially if you kind of just do it a little bit randomly like I am. Um, And if you adjust the volume and the panning of that, right, that would sit together quite nicely. Um, so that's how we would dro drop our own samples in there. Now, of course, if we wanted to do the same sort of thing as them, we'll come over here. We could go grab an EQ with the pad selected, or we could just drop it on there. And then that's going to apply this EQ only to this hi-hat. So if I click on this one, it's not there. So I could audition this hat, and you can see there's a lot of low end in it. So I could grab that, and I could just... Strat and we haven't we haven't looked at EQs and this sort of thing yet, so cutting and compressing and that sort of stuff. It's going to come in a later video, but we could cut all the low end out of it, and we'll do that um, in depth in the future. But yeah, that gives you an idea of how you'd put an, a device on just to affect that particular sound. And if you don't want it, you just delete it. So that is a look at drum racks, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to support my channel, consider subscribing on YouTube following on Facebook. Alternatively, if you'd like to support me financially, jump over onto Patreon and become a patron, or donate via PayPal. And don't forget, starting a new endeavor such as learning Ableton and electronic music production can be extremely overwhelming, so take things day by day and believe in yourself. Thank you.